Welcome to Beyond the Horizon podcast, a show all about the Horizon ecosystem and the exciting world of blockchain and Web3. Join us as we explore the latest happenings in this rapidly evolving space and discover new horizons together. Now let's go Beyond the Horizon. Hey everyone, welcome back to Beyond the Horizon. Today's episode is going to focus all on the community and the launch of the DAO. We're really excited for the launch of this DAO. It's five years in coming and it's super exciting for the entire community. So we're welcoming on Menon and John to talk about the Horizon community and how they see this DAO supporting the growth of the community as a whole. Before we hop into that, I wanted to share some exciting news with you all. We do have several new updates for this month, including the fact that Pith has launched to Horizon Eon, so you can now connect your DeFi projects and protocols to their Oracle for a high fidelity Oracle feed. So check it out um, if you're launching your smart contracts on Eon. Uh, I highly recommend checking out Pith. We've also partnered with Tatum to provide developers with access to their SDK and infrastructure. In addition to this, we've also completed the new Zen hard fork. This begins the process of removing access to shielded pools to our main chain. And I recommend checking out our blog for more information. We also launched a couple of new Academy articles this month. Check out the latest in uh, token issuance models and more. Now we're going to go ahead and move into the interview portion and I'll welcome on John and Manon. Hey everyone, welcome back to Beyond the Horizon. Today I have Manon and John. Manon is from Horizon and John is from Horizon Labs. You may both know both of them from Discord and other community engagement platforms that we're on. Um, But today I would love for them to, of course, reintroduce themselves in Manon's case and introduce themselves in John's case. Uh, So Manon, let's go ahead and start with you. Could you introduce yourself to us? Yes, shortly. Uh, So yes, I'm Manon. I'm uh, in the Horizon community. Uh, I started to join uh, five years ago. Um, so now I'm part of the marketing team at the Horizon Foundation, so now the Horizon DAO. And I'm known as the mother of cats on Discord uh, because my cats are well known today uh, in the community. So yeah, that's me. I love it. Thank you so much for reintroducing yourself to us. Uh, John, I know the community knows you as Grimlock, but could you kind of introduce yourself to us uh, a little more in depth? Yeah, sure, of course. Uh, so obviously, hi, I'm John. Uh, I'm your community manager. Um, I was previously uh, a game developer. I worked as a concept artist and a visual development artist for around 10 years before I entered into the NFT space. And then, you know, that was sort of my first steps into learning more about Web3 and getting involved in the creative community there, which, um, you know, promptly sort of put me on my greater Web3 journey, uh, leading me here today. Thank you so much for introducing yourself to us. Today, we're going to be focusing on the launch of the Horizon DAO and the community. Um, And I think that's a really great topic for us to kind of dig into now that the DAO is about to launch. Um, So I brought you both on because, of course, you're both the experts at the Horizon community and, of course, know it better than everybody else. Let's go ahead. We'll dive into our Q&A session today. Um, So I do have just a few questions. Feel free to uh, really expand on them if you have additional thoughts that come up when when we're discussing this but um let's go ahead and maybe kind of discuss a little more in depth what your positions are within the community um and how you guys both support um and engage with the community um with those positions uh, Menon, if if you'd like to start yeah sure uh thank you Erika. Uh, so yeah, my uh, engagement with the Horizon community started five years ago. Uh, so I started with uh, translations uh, from English to, to French. Uh, so I started as an ambassador. And uh, with the years, uh, so I took uh, a degree in marketing. Uh, I started to work as a writer 
for other blockchain companies uh, and also in marketing department. And um, I had the opportunity to stay full-time at Horizon uh, maybe uh, one year ago. So I took this opportunity as soon as I uh, was able to. And uh, right now, so I do... I do a lot of things, uh, well, community related at Horizon. Uh, so I take care of the ambassador program with my colleagues as well. Um, I'm doing some research on the community side and marketing side. I'm also writing some articles sometimes, reviewing some articles, and I try to stay uh, as close as possible to the community to uh, to anticipate the needs and uh, to listen to, to them to provide the best tools and uh, services to uh, to the community. Thank you. And John, could you tell us a little bit more about how community managers uh, help support the Horizon ecosystem and community? Yeah, of course. Um, I think a, a, such a huge part of being a community manager is sort of knowing the social sciences behind community and, you know, how people interact with one another and how they grow together and, you know, how you sort of work through the initial onboarding phases of new people and welcoming them into a space and sort of ensuring that um, the space in and of itself is a nurturing one and it's a one you know one that's going to be able to within reason grow on its own um, and I think that's sort of been my primary focus here. Obviously, I'm still quite a, a, a somewhat I don't know maybe like a somewhat kind of a new hire here. I've only been in the project uh, since late February. Um, so it's taken me, you know, a while to find my feet, but I've been enjoying it a lot and I've been enjoying getting stuck in with our community and getting more presence there and sort of just sort of, um, seeing the characters that we have there and how they interact and how they engage and sort of what makes this community unique, what makes it tick and sort of like what, what drives it. And then taking that knowledge to sort of just cultivate things behind the scenes to try to ensure that this community has what it needs from me and it has what it needs where within itself to be able to, you know, yeah. So it's got the support that it needs, but also to be able to grow and sort of exist just independently. Thank you for that. And I feel like with the Horizon DAO coming so soon that we'll likely end up kind of seeing some changes and growth within the community. How do you think the DAO will benefit benefit the greater community as a whole? Uh, perhaps John, if you wouldn't mind hopping in here first. Yeah, sure. Um, I think that the kind of autonomy that comes with a DAO is going to be a really powerful tool and driving force for the future of this community. Um, I think that's going to like 100% enable them to take the community to new heights and new growth opportunities. Like sometimes the kind of growth opportunities like that can only really come from that kind of autonomy. So I'm really excited to sort of see what they do with that change in driving force for them. You know, that sort of like they get to put their hands on the wheel for a change and see what they can do with it. And uh, I think that's going to be a really powerful asset for them. That's a really great visual, uh, giving them the, the driving force. I, I like that a lot. Menon, how do you think the DAO will benefit the greater community? Um, that's exactly that. Giving to give more autonomy to the community, uh, more um, knowledge in a way, uh, more power to to decide of the future of Horizon, but how we distribute uh, distribute grants, or we uh, distribute also stipends for the ambassadors. So that's really um, to put more trust in the community. And that's something we promised as well when we created Horizon. Uh, I know that Rob Viglione wanted it to be a DAO uh, as soon as possible, and uh, that's uh, something we achieved today. So um, that's something I'm really, I really longed for uh, so many years. So I, I hope and I think that the community too. So uh, I can't wait to see where, where it goes and uh, what the community does with that. Yeah, it really has been a long road to a DAO. Um, even the space wasn't, I don't think, ready for true DAOs for a pretty long portion of that time. But we seem to finally be in a place as an industry where DAOs are 
actually capable and um, given the right tools to be successful. So I'm really excited as well for the launch of the DAO. I know that it's been a long time coming, but um, of course with a DAO, a lot of change happens. What kind of changes do you foresee occurring within the community, Menon? Uh, there's the, the power of the vote, uh, because we have a community uh, that is uh, skilled uh, in development, uh, in also blockchain industry and crypto space, uh, because that's been five years we are on the market. Uh, and the community shifted a lot uh, within the years. Uh, sometimes we had some more developers, sometimes we had more uh, traders. And now it's time to, to converge all the forces, uh, to have everyone um, leading uh, Horizon, hopefully the, in the best way. Uh, so that would be the, the changes, uh, to have more trust, if you can say that, in the community, because we already trusted the community. but. Uh, to give more tools uh, to show trust in the community. Um, maybe we will see some grants uh, that we didn't expect uh, to, to give as a Horizon or a Horizon Labs, but that the community uh, fund. And uh, so that will be the exciting things to see uh, in the next weeks. Thank you. John, do you foresee any other changes than the ones that Menon mentioned previously? It's interesting because every community is kind of its own unique little ecosystem. So sometimes it can be kind of difficult to fully sort of predict, you know, what they'll do when they get the reins. Um, I think I'm excited to sort of see, I can't speak to like any sort of specific changes, but I think I'm really excited to see what their priorities sort of shift into and what that then drives them towards, you know? Um, like some, you know, like Manon said, the kind of grants that we might see come out of this uh, community going forwards might be very different. The kind of priorities that they're going to have now might shift a little bit over the coming months, over the years, and I think that is going to be very interesting to sort of um, to watch unfold. So now with the DAO coming, what are some of the ways that people can contribute within the community, Manon? There's many ways to contribute to the community. Uh, so we have the nodes, uh, the mining nodes, and the secure and super nodes. Uh, soon, maybe the forge nodes. So we will have, you will have three types of nodes to contribute to the Horizon ecosystem. And then you also have uh, the ambassador program, uh, where you can get some stipends and reward for translations, uh, threads, articles, uh, anything you want to build on, uh, on Horizon Eon or on Zendu. Um, there is also the daily tasks. So every day you can uh, get some uh, Zen, Zenies uh, to uh, raise awareness about the, uh, the ecosystem. Uh, you will soon have the daily quiz. Uh, so this time to get some rewards to learn about the Horizon project. Uh, we have some Galaxy campaigns. Um, there's many ways to contribute to, to the ecosystem. And even without stipends or rewards, uh, you can also um, contribute to the ecosystem by, by participating in the Discord, in the Telegram group, in the Twitter. Uh, so just to raise awareness uh, about the uh, Horizon ecosystem. We have this very inclusive ecosystem uh, with many people, uh, many people all around the world. And uh, we would like to pursue that. So uh, keep coming. Thank you, Manon. And John, do you have anything to add to what Manon has said about uh, participating in the community? Yeah. Um, honestly, you know, I think it can often be seen as quite surface level, but I think one of the best ways that people within our community at present can uh, continue to contribute is to just be welcoming and kind. I think, you know, some of the most important parts of community, of community growth happen during someone's onboarding. Um, and if you've got a community that is welcoming, that is kind, that is like assisting with people coming in who just might be new to Web3 in general and they're still trying to figure things out, you know, or they're new to the space and they're trying to figure things out, having this overwhelming like sort of source of people just being like, yeah, no, we're just grateful that you're here. It's great, you know, we can talk you through a lot of this stuff and help you figure out, like we had to figure it out at one point. You know, I think that can make such a massive impact to a community's growth overall. Um, and it's often sort of missed or dismissed as we get deeper into 
um, sort of the the I don't know the deeper layers of like what kind of rewards people are getting out of this community. They forget that you've got to sort of like put in the years or the grind through whatever to get to that point. And really, one of the most important starting points is just making sure that someone's first steps in this community are you know pleasant ones. I think that makes all the difference. I think that's a great answer. It really is important for people to have that warm, welcoming introduction to a community. That's how people decide that it's worthwhile to stay if they're welcoming with open arms and uh, helpful, helpful community members. So I know that um, I was going to ask a few other questions, but they were more pert pertaining to uh, the launch of Eon. And I was curious to kind of get your thoughts on what um, we may end up seeing as a trend with the launch of Horizon Eon. Um, John, I think this would be a really great one for you to kick off. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I think there's obviously, you know, there's, there's a lot that we could see the possibilities here are. Uh, broad, to say the least. Um, but I know what I want to see in this community, and I think that's that's real growth and effort put into the creative space. Um, you know, NFTs, interesting projects coming from that side of things. Obviously, that's a space and a community that, you know, overall that I'm very passionate about. Um, and I just think some of the, the most interesting use cases for Web3 are still sort of to be uncovered in that area. And I would love to see our community start pushing into those regions and sort of just flexing their creativity there. Yeah, I'd love that. That's a great answer. Manon, how about you? So yeah, I would like to see more uh, real use case NFTs uh, on a horizon, uh, like for diplomas or patents, uh, but also ni nice artists uh, coming. Uh, I would like to see a lot of dApps, uh, DeFi protocols on, uh, on Horizon Eon. Any kind of developer is welcome on the, on the Horizon ecosystem. So feel free to join, to join the forces, um, to discuss with uh, the Horizon Labs teams, uh, with the Horizon ambassadors and developers, and uh, you'll get help to build anything you want on uh, Horizon Eon. I love that. And I was going to ask for parting thoughts, but honestly, Manon and John, I think that uh, what you both just said were the perfect parting thoughts. Um, so we'll go ahead and end it with that. So thank you both so much for joining us today. Um, I really appreciate you guys sharing your thoughts and your expertise with us. Thank you for joining us on Beyond the Horizon. Stay tuned for more exciting episodes as we continue to discover the limitless potential of the Horizon ecosystem. If you liked this episode, make sure to subscribe and leave a thumbs up. Thank you, and we'll see you again next time.